This video is about two things. Saren Jameson's false DMCA claim on one of my videos, and what is fair use, the thing that makes his claim false. First of all, you'll see this lovely artwork behind you that says, ha 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 losers, shit, posting, has a lovely comic of a feminist throwing poop over a wall and the poop being thrown back and her claiming misogyny loudly. Help me. This is the artwork in question. And by the way, this video also qualifies as fair use as it is discussing the ban and explaining using the artwork necessarily as part of the explanation. So, let's close the artwork itself here and show it in GIMP. This is what I put it together in, and I have removed most of the layers. Um, I did some editing to it to empty out the hole, the general black holey area here, and you'll actually see if I remove, assuming that you can see it on the camera, if I remove the black layer behind it, uh, you have a cutout, basically, of everything that was on the screen. I didn't care about it so much for the ship, but um, I have the comic, which has been masked out so that it is only in the black hole. I have this layer group here where I have specifically the word shit warping out of the title to emphasize that Star Trek shit posting is, in fact, full of shit. The warp effect seemed appropriate. And then, as the topmost layer, I have a text layer. Ha ha ha, losers! Which is just yellow text with a black outline and another gradient warp effect down into this black hole, whatever. <clears throat> now, supposedly, and I'll just assume that this is true, this is entirely the original work, or at least the... Uh, Basis is the original work of Saren Jameson. That's spelled S-E-R-I-N, Saren. Not Saran, like Saran Wrap, so don't get that confused. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is the artwork in dispute. This is what Saren Jameson is saying, I have violated copyright by using, you know, copyright law, blah, blah, blah. Now, I'm in the United States. This was used as a thumbnail on YouTube. It was not actually in the video. Now, thanks to Saren's objection, Saren gets a whole video on Saren's artwork. And I am in the U.S. YouTube is a website in the U.S. Everything on YouTube is bound under U.S. law. Even though Saren Jameson is Australian, Saren Jameson posted the artwork originally to Facebook, a United States corporation, and I posted to YouTube, a United States corporation. The governing law is very firmly within the United States here. There is no Australian jurisdiction. Therefore, Australian jurisprudence is irrelevant. So, let's discuss this. And see, this is why you don't fuck with someone who knows copyright. Let's discuss this. The four-factor test. This is the fair use exception to United States copyright law. It is the thing that allows you to violate someone's copyright as much as you want if it falls under fair use. So we will discuss that now with this lovely artwork in the background so that you can look at it and formulate your own opinions. In fact, what if, uh, yeah, no, we'll just leave it alone. <clears throat> All right, and maybe I'll stop coughing after a while. The four factor test. Factor one, what is the character of the use? They have a matrix, which you can't see on the camera. Less favorable to use is commercial. Now this, this is a little complicated because the four-factor test is not as simple as just, you know, oh, if it's a commercial use, if you use it to make money, you're instantly disqualified. That's not how it works. Now, technically one could argue that this, on a monetized video, is a commercial use. In theory, it is commercial, therefore less favorable to being judged fair use. Fair use is also quite arbitrary, in that regard, um, in the middle between more and less favorable is nonprofit educational personal. So it's sort of neutral. It doesn't really matter if it's educational or not quite as much. Um, education kind of sort of leans it a little bit towards more fair use, but 
More favorable to use, and this is where the case becomes very strong. More favorable to use. Criticism. Is anybody going to look at this and think that I am representing that I made the original artwork? Is anyone going to look at this and think anything other than criticism of something? Ha 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 losers is not not a criticism. Double negatives are terrible. <clears throat> Commentary, news reporting, parody, repurposing a work, providing new context or otherwise adding value. I took the original work. I put in feminism on the internet, a social justice warrior comic in the black hole. I emphasized the word shit from the ring. And I added ha 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 losers. So, uh, adding value. I mean, you may not think that it's valuable, but value is not defined as I like it or I don't like it. It's is it adding speech instead of just using the thing wholesale without commenting on it. This is commentary and criticism, the strongest use case for fair use under the first test. Let's go a little further. <clears throat> oh yeah, the uses on the left are strongly transformative when they use a work in a new way and serve a new market from the one the original was intended to serve. The new market thing is actually really important. Let's discuss that. Uh, a little later, factor two, what is the nature of the work to be used? Less favorable to fair use. Um, imaginative or highly creative and unpublished, doesn't matter. Uh, more favorable to fair use, fact and published. So th this really doesn't apply. Um, it, it, it's not... Fact versus imaginative, this doesn't really have as much bearing. Um, Fact published, I mean, it is published, but it is also imaginative. Uh, it's kind of a mixture of fact and imaginative, which puts it dead center. It really doesn't have an effect on this particular use. So let's skip factor two. It's not really going to make a difference one way or the other. How much of the work will you use? More than a small amount makes it less favorable. Small quantity or an appropriate amount for a transformative purpose makes it more favorable. We could argue that as I have used his entire piece of banner art from the Facebook page for the 6th anniversary of Star Trek shitposting, we could argue that it's less favorable because I have used more than a small amount. In fact, I have taken his entire work. However, I have greatly transformed it, and an appropriate amount for a transformative purpose. Transformation is actually more important in this whole fair use thing than whether or not you used all or part of it. <clears throat> um, using a small amount, it's kind of more important for things like, say, excerpts of a newspaper. You know, if you read the whole newspaper, yeah, you're copying the newspaper. If you read a small segment of an article or cut it out so that you can quote it and say something about it that's different. This is not a newspaper. This is not a factual thing. This is the logo of a group that I'm criticizing. This is me labeling my criticism on top of it. It would be like if I thought Coca-Cola... Uh, in the 1940s supported the Nazis and I gave them a Nazi, uh, what you call it, swastika haircut and a Hitler stash on the Coca-Cola logo. Now I'd be using a protected mark, which this is not a protected mark, but I would be using a protected trademark in a way that they don't authorize but it is still a fair use because I have modified it such that I'm commenting on it. A Coca-Cola logo with a Hitler stash and a swastika haircut attached to it, and probably anthropomorphized on top of that, is not going to be mistaken for Coca-Cola. So, how much will you use? Well, I used all of it, but I also used it for a transformative purpose. It was not possible to use part of it, because if I cut some of it out, it's not the banner from the page. You know, we're using a banner that is well recognized from people in that group so that it is identifiable what it is I'm talking about. There are multiple Star Trek ship posting groups on Facebook, literally called Star Trek ship posting. Anyone can make one. That banner not only serves as a way for me to criticize them, but also to identify who it is I'm criticizing and not just any random group. <coughs> okay. Factor four, probably the most important, if this kind of use were widespread, what effect would it have on the market for the original or for permissions? Let's go down the less favorable side first. Use is not transformative. Something tells me that I've transformed it a little bit. Competes with, take sales away from, the original. No. No one's going to take this and make money off of it and not make money and, and not give money to Saren, the copyright joker. 
avoids payment for permission, royalties, in an established market for licenses of the type that you desire. Well, I'm not avoiding payment for royalties. This is a parody. This is making fun of the person who made the art and their group. This is not a use that I have to license. So let's go to the middle. Password enter technological protection. That That's not really important. I don't even know. How does password or technological protection even have anything to do with copyright fair use? I don't know. I'll look that up later. More favorable to fair use. Proposed use is transformative and not merely duplicative. So you didn't just copy it, you made changes to it. <clears throat> and amount used is appropriate for transformative purpose. What is our purpose? Take that logo, use it both to identify the group and to make fun of them. Mockery, parody, satire, criticism, commentary, cornerstones of fair use. So if I only used part of it, for example, it may not be as recognizable. It is not the banner at that point. I've hacked it up into something unrecognizable. But at the same time, I've added enough garbage on top of it and cut away at it enough that it's kind of like clippings from paper. It has been transformed significantly. Proposed use is not transformative, but amount is small. That, that would be like if, if I took, uh, like I said, a little excerpt of an article. Irrelevant here. Original is out of print, not relevant. Copyright owner is unidentifiable, clearly not relevant. Uh, no available license of the type you want. I mean, <laughs> nobody's going to give you a license to make fun of them. Or oh, you got a license for that joke? Anyway, that's it on the uh, fair use stuff. Now, if you want to see these charts, the uh, this is from the University of Texas Libraries, Four Factors of Fair Use, or the Four Factor Test. And... It's pretty plain to say that this is very clear fair use under United States copyright law. What is going to happen from here? Saren has dropped a DMCA takedown request to YouTube to take my video down eh, this coming Friday as of the filming of this video. So YouTube will take down my video and issue a copyright strike on my channel. Am I butthurt about it? Not a bit, because what's going to happen? Well, you'll see Friday. I don't want to spoil it, but Saren is going to be sorely disappointed. Thanks for the artwork, Saren. It's too bad you're not ever going to be able to stop me from using it, and even if you did in one place, I've spread it all over the internet. So here's how I feel about that. You know that what you did was wrong. You know that you violated the law. Well, not technically violated the law, but you issued a false takedown request. And you know what? If it wasn't so hard to sue Australian people for damages, this is what I'd do to you in court, buddy. Thanks so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. I hope this has been educational. And, um... Ha ha ha! Losers!